Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. We did it. We finally predicted every single team from every single Power 5 conference, concluding with the ACC. And today we are going to bring you our ACC conference recap, our projected standings for the ACC heading in to this upcoming college football season, which is now just a few short weeks away. Before we get to that, Again, welcome back to the channel, guys. We're so glad that you could join us today. As always, please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and check out everything down in the description below, including our expert picks over on our website, thegridironexpert.com. Again, you got a few weeks still to sign up before the season starts for some of the best college football and NFL spread picks in the country. We've beat out over 80% of the national handicappers each of the last five years. So if you want a guaranteed winning record, guaranteed winnings, money right back in your pocket, and the best customer service that any handicapper in the country can give you, this is the place for you. One of the lowest prices in the country for the best picks in the country, guaranteed. Go sign up for those today, guys. You do not want to miss out on that. Check out our Patreon account as well for exclusive college football content year-round. And send us some gear. We've wrapped up every Power 5 conference. We're going to have our Group of 5 recaps coming out next week. So whoever your team may be, send us some gear so we can represent them in every single Gridiron Expert video for the entire season. You do not want to miss out on that. We'd love to continue to expand our GE Nation from coast to coast. And again, that mailing address down in the description below. So let's go ahead and do it. Let's pull up that graphic. And take a look at the ACC, which, remember, does not have divisions this year. The ACC, done with divisions. So there's no Atlantic division. There's no coastal division. It's just going to be the top two teams in the conference. Those two teams will play in the ACC championship game. And up at the top are the typical suspects. Clemson and Florida State are the two teams that we will have meeting in the ACC championship game. We'll predict, uh, predict the winner of that at the end of this video, tell you who we have winning the ACC. The Tigers we have going 12-0, which might come as a shock to many, but Clemson's schedule is pretty favorable. They get to host Florida State. They get to host Notre Dame. They get to host North Carolina. Yes, they do have to travel to Miami, NC State, and South Carolina, but their biggest games of the year are at home for Clemson. A Clemson team that has Kate Klubnick, a new offensive coordinator and a good one, and Garrett Riley, uh, and a defense that will be one of the best in the country and is arguably the best in the conference. So Clemson, a very favorable schedule. At the worst, this team is 11-1, but we do believe they can run the table and go 12-0. Florida State right behind them. The Seminoles, a phenomenal team, loaded with talent on both sides of the ball. 17 starters back, won 10 games last year. We think they do it again this year. Their 10th win actually came in the bowl game, we think they can get 10 in the regular season. Mike Norvell doing a phenomenal job uh, down in Tallahassee. The Seminoles have a tough opening to the season, right? They play LSU in the season opener in Orlando. That's on that Sunday. Uh, and then they play at Clemson just a few weeks later. So two of their toughest games of the year uh, in the first four weeks of the season. But after that, the schedule relatively favorable. A lot of home games. Get to host Miami, host Duke, host Virginia Tech. Uh, they do travel to Wake Forest and Pittsburgh and Florida, uh, but a lot of those are teams that we would project Florida State to be favored in and more than likely project them to win. And remember, if you want to see game-by-game -game predictions for every single one of these teams, all 14 teams, just go check out the ACC Football Predictions playlist. Same can be said for all of our other Power 5 conferences so you can get more details and in-depth analysis for all these teams and for all of these games. Coming in and a tie for third. We have a three-way tie for third. Pittsburgh, North Carolina, and Miami all coming in in our predictions at 8-4, and 5-3 and three in conference play, which is kind of crazy to think about, crazy to look at. But when you really do a deeper dive in their schedule, again, go watch those videos, you'll see why. But Pittsburgh doing a phenomenal job, her usual, under Pat Narduzzi. A very favorable start to the season with their schedule. Uh, but the back half, a little bit more difficult. They have to travel to Notre Dame. They get to host Florida State. But that's not an easy game at all. They have to go to Duke. They play Syracuse and the Bronx. Uh, so a very tough, uh, difficult schedule for Pittsburgh, but a team that brings in Phil Jerkovic, a quarterback, typically has a very strong defense, would expect another fantastic year under Pat Narduzzi. But it should be noted, though, that Pittsburgh has lost at least three games in every season since 1981. We project it to be the case again this year. North Carolina, some would be shocked to have them at 8-4, and 5-3. And, and, I, and I can see North Carolina maybe getting an upset win or an extra win in there and getting to 9-3, and three, but I just don't think they have enough to win 10 regular season games. I mean, the schedule, guys, is brutal. We know they've got Drake May, one of the best quarterbacks in the country, threw for over 4,000 yards, but the defense concerns me, and it concerns me in those first four weeks. First four weeks, they play South Carolina, App State, Minnesota, and Pittsburgh on the road. Uh, we talked about in the UNC video, guys. I mean, 
I think three and one or four and zero oh would be phenomenal for North Carolina. But a one and three start, even an zero oh and four start, is not out of the realm of possibility. Uh, North Carolina clearly is better than that, but it is not impossible to think that UNC could start one and three or zero oh and four with that tough of a schedule to start. The middle part of their schedule is very favorable before they conclude at Clemson and at NC State. But how they fare in those first four games before the bye week will really dictate and kind of give you the, the trajectory for North Carolina football in 2023. Again, high expectations, phenomenal talent. Can they live up to it? Remember, this is the reigning Coastal Champions from last year. They did play in the ACC Championship game. Outside of that, Miami coming in as a tie for third, uh, but obviously coming in last in that tiebreaker due to the tiebreaking scenarios. But the Hurricanes at eight and four, five and three in conference play, that would be a really big step forward in year two under Mario Cristobal. A lot of people would say it's disappointing, but anytime you improve your win total by three games, that's really, really impressive. It's just, you know, considering the sky high expectations at Miami, people wouldn't say it's impressive. They'd say it's another disappointment. But the Hurricanes guys, a lot of talent coming back, 19 starters, two new coordinators. Uh, and again, that game against Texas A&M in week two, that's going to give you a really good measuring stick of how good this Miami team is. Uh, a battle against the Aggies, who also went 5-7 and seven last year. The winner of that is going to get a huge momentum boost to kick off their season. The loser, season's not over, doesn't ruin anything, uh, but it's going to kind of tell you a lot of what you need to know and how the rest of the season could go. So that A&M game, crucial on their schedule. They do draw Clemson. They do draw Florida State. They do draw a road game at North Carolina. The schedule does them no favors whatsoever, but the talent certainly there. Mario Cristobal, as a coach, certainly there, has the talent to lead this team to maybe even nine wins. And they snag an extra win in there. But we believe eight and four, more likely the case of the Hurricanes next year, could be the year they break through and maybe contend for an ACC title. Louisville coming in at six overall. Still in the top half, right? New coach and Jeff Brom returning to his alma mater. This Louisville team's for real, though, guys. I mean, it's offense primarily made up of transfers. Jack Plummer uh, in at quarterback, was at Purdue with Jeff Brom at first, transferred to California, threw for over 3,000 yards last year, now back with Brom at Louisville. Uh, Jawar Jordan is not a transfer, but is one of the better running backs, I'd say, in the ACC. And then a handful of wide receiver transfers as well. How quickly they gel with Jack Plummer will kind of depend on the success of Louisville football this year. The defense going to be phenomenal as well. A lot less than 20 points per game last year. A lot of returning talent on that side of the ball. I expect Louisville to kind of be salty. If you're looking for maybe a sleeper team in the ACC, watch out for Louisville. They should get off to a really strong start with a favorable schedule. They get to host Notre Dame. They host Duke. Uh, they do have to travel to Miami. Not ideal there, but they avoid Florida State. They avoid Clemson. So watch out for the Cardinals, guys. They are a couple upsets away from really maybe flirting with an ACC championship appearance. Five and three, only two games behind Florida State for second place. Duke coming in and a tie for seventh with NC State and Wake Forest all coming in at seven and five, four and four in conference play. I love this Duke team, guys. I'm telling you, it's, one, it's an unfortunate case for the Blue Devils where they are arguably better than they were last year when they won nine games. They have 18 starters coming back. So Duke is arguably better, but the schedule isn't going to reflect that, right? They have to open the season up against Clemson on Labor Day Monday. Then they host Notre Dame a few weeks later. So two teams that could probably be top five teams when Duke faces them. Uh, legitimate college football playoff contenders. They have to travel to Florida State. They have to travel to Louisville. They travel to North Carolina. Uh, I mean, it's just a brutal, brutal schedule for Mike Elko's squad. Seven and five, honestly, would be a heck of an accomplishment, especially considering the struggles that Duke had been going through uh, the years prior to him. Last year, breakout year. This year, seven and five would be remarkable. NC State, kind of the same thing, right? Uh, a Wolfpack team that disappointed last year, but mostly due to injuries. Losing Devin Leary midseason uh, is not ideal. And if he doesn't go down, I think NC State eclipses eight wins, which is all they had last year. We have them at seven and five. Uh, they get Brennan Armstrong in at quarterback, transferring him from Virginia. Obviously a very good defense per usual, uh, but the Wolfpack, again, a difficult schedule of their own. They have to play Notre Dame. They have to go to Duke. They draw Clemson to Miami in back-to-back -back weeks. Uh, not going to be an easy slate for the Wolfpack at all. And the same can be said for Wake Forest, who will now be dealing with life post-Sam Hartman, who transferred to Notre Dame. But I have a lot of faith in Mitch Griffiths. I have a lot of faith in this offense as a whole. Dave Clawson continues to exceed expectations in Winston-Salem. This year, someone could maybe project Wake Forest to miss a bowl game or take a major step back. No, we've got them with a winning record, and Wake Forest going to their eighth straight bowl game. Wholeheartedly believe that. I have a lot of faith in their offense. I believe their defense improves mightily from last year. Coming in at 10th, 10th, Syracuse. 
Love the orange, and we've got some Syracuse gear in our background, courtesy of our man, Jerry Turner. And as always, Jerry, we do appreciate you. Syracuse in at 6-6. Six and six. They've got a veteran quarterback in Garrett Schrader. They kind of exceeded expectations last year, going 7-5 and five in the regular season. Started 6-0, and oh, kind of faltered down the stretch. But hey, still a winning season. A lot of talent back with Schrader and Aranda Gaston at tight end, who really plays this game more like a wide receiver, not so much as a tight end. Uh, the defense still needs some work. The secondary going to take a major step back. How they fare against some of the better quarterbacks they face, such as Kay Clemson at Clemson, Drake May at UNC, and Jordan Travis at Florida State, who they unfortunately play in three consecutive weeks. Uh, that's going to really dictate kind of how uh, Syracuse season goes. But regardless, I believe Dino Babers continues to kind of remove his name off the hot seat, get Syracuse to another bowl game, which is exactly what Orange fans should be hoping for. And then Boston College in at 11, the last ACC team we have going bowling, they were a team that was just plagued by injuries last year. Uh, Bill Jerkovac was just under pressure nonstop. The offensive line was terrible. They were Everybody was getting hurt left and right. Keep in mind, this was a team that, you know, had was bowl eligible in like 2018, 19, 2021, uh, failed to make a bowl game last year at three and nine, but injuries playing a ba very big role in that. I believe Jeff Halfley writes the ship. If Boston College stays healthy, they should go bowling. The schedule does allow for that. Very favorable opening part of the season. And then a couple games in the middle of the year, such as the game against UConn, the home game against Virginia Tech, uh, even the road game at Georgia Tech possibly, where BC can pick up a couple late wins to clinch a six win season. Rounding out the ACC in the bottom half, Virginia Tech, Georgia Tech, Virginia, all failing to miss a bowl game. Virginia Tech the closest, going five and seven. We had them just missing out on a bowl game. Brent Pry, you know, a rough go around in year one in Blacksburg, really hit the transfer portal hard. Chiron Drones coming in from Baylor, hoping to give the offense a little bit boost at quarterback, and that's assuming he wins the job over Grant Wells, who was a starter last year. I do think Virginia Tech takes a step forward, clearly. From 3-8 and eight to 5-7, and seven, they're going to improve in their win total. Wait, in Virginia Tech, so many close one-possession losses last year where if they had won those, they would have gone bowling, and maybe the, the expectations aren't as low for the Hokies this year. But the schedule is very tough for them. They have to play Purdue. They go on the road to Rutgers, on the road to Marshall, on the road to Florida State, at Louisville. I mean, it's a rough go-around where this might not be the year that Brent Pry gets into the postseason. Very well could be next year, though. Georgia Tech also dealing with a new coach, Brent Key. Getting the interim tag removed after going 4-4 four and four down the stretch in 2022. A lot of talent coming in for him, right? He hit the transfer portal hard. Haynes, Haynes King transferring in a quarterback from Texas A&M. A lot of other transfers on, from, on the skill positions. The defense, not as bad as people think. Secondary is actually going to be really, really good. It's just a matter of if Georgia Tech can slow down the run game after allowing 189 rushing yards per game. Uh, we had them at 4-8. and eight. Again, there are a couple games on their schedule that are toss-ups so where we wouldn't be shocked to see them win one and get to five and seven. But I still think this team's a year away from breaking through and getting to a bowl game. But I love the Brent Key hire. I think he's the perfect man for the job. And then Virginia rounding out the ACC standings, two and ten, winless in conference play. Maybe they snag a conference win over Georgia Tech. Maybe they snag an upset over Virginia Tech. Although I highly doubt that. Uh, you know, there, there's a couple of maybe possible winnable games there, but this is going to be a rough go around in year two for Tony Elliott. The offense is atrocious. Tony must get transferring in at quarterback. I mean, I'm not, not sure if he's going to be the answer, answer from Monmouth. Uh, the defense, actually better than people realize, held their opponents to 28 yards per game under their average last year. So not as bad as people think, but the defense is only going to be able to do so much if the offense can contribute. And this is going to be another rough season for Tony Elliott, actually taking a minor step back in 2023. And we got them at 2-10. and 10. Wouldn't be shocked to see them go 1-11, even worse. The two wins coming over James Madison and William and & Mary, and neither of those are going to be easy victories or easy games for the Cavaliers. So with all that being said, guys, those are your ACC standings from top to bottom. The ACC championship projected by us, Clemson versus Florida State. The second meeting this season between the Tigers and the Seminoles. Two great offenses, two great defenses. This is what we want to see, right? Two teams that dominated the Atlantic Division for so long, now the divisions are gone, and look, we've still got them in a championship game. This is going to be epic, absolutely epic. But ultimately, we are going to have to side with the Clemson Tigers to win the ACC for the second year in a row. I still believe that Clemson has the best defense in the ACC. They have one of the top five defenses in the country this year, and I believe that offense is only going to get stronger and better as the year goes on. The Tigers beat Florida State in the ACC Championship narrowly. It's a one-possession game. It's a, thrill, a thriller. It's what you want in a conference championship game, but Clemson gets the win 13-0, and the Tigers will be back 
and the college football playoff. So there you have it, guys, your projected ACC standings in 2023. That wraps up our Power 5 predictions. Starting on Monday, we will go through our Group of 5 recaps videos just like this, projecting the records for every single Group of 5 team, so you do not want to miss out on that. And then the week after, it's game week. It is time to start breaking down the games in week zero. College football is finally here, guys. It is finally back. We're going to have you covered every step of the way, and you're not going to want to miss anything that we have coming your way, not just these next two weeks, but all season long. So, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos. Of course, check out everything down in the description below. Again, do not miss out on those expert picks. Sign up for those. Today, before the season starts, you not want to miss out on that. Remember, if you sign up before the season starts, you get to stay locked in at the same price. No price change for you next year if you sign up before the end of August. Make sure to check out our Patreon account as well for exclusive college football content year-round. Of course, send us some gear, whether it's any ACC gear or whoever your team may be. We'd love to get your team represented in every single Gridiron Expert video. The mailing address down in the description below. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert.